Hello, right, so um, I'm now recording. Welcome everyone to the uh, inaugural Ice House podcast. We um, we brought in the big gun straight away, Andy Hamilton. Welcome. Welcome. How are you, Gareth? I'm good, mate. Are you okay? Yeah, no, I'm great. I'm good. So um, the Ice House is going to start doing some virtual podcasts. Um, while we're still in lockdown, we'll be doing them on Zoom. The um, aim in the future, based on popularity, is to um, get them set up at the Ice House and have a nice, you know, people come in and actually do them. But we, um, we figured, it's been on the cards for a while, but we figured while we've got a bit of time, time, uh, we'll do Does it. Does that mean like a room? with padding and sound and everything yeah yeah kind of um yeah <laughs> i don't know if that's gonna happen but we, we were talking today about getting microphones so i thought that was a big step for us so yeah um, microphone if you get a really good microphone it makes a big difference to the sound yeah so apologies for the sound on this we're, uh, we're both just recording this off of our uh, computers but um so the point of these podcasts is just to have open conversations not necessarily be very um uh mature or professional um which i guess is why i've been asked to run them um and the first person is you so uh so what could happen on this nobody knows i think there's quite a few nervous people at the ice house but you've got a whole lot of questions that you gave me in advance so it'll be fine yeah and if you think i'm actually going to follow those questions we've never met have we no <laughs> let's do it let's get okay, into well. it so we are on uh, officially week five of lockdown how are you finding it are you finding it okay today today is the first time i'm going to get in the car and drive in five weeks <gasps> wow get my flu jab are you oh you are yeah don't think i've got it for the last five years but respond and all my family always get it and i was like ah oh, i need to do the right thing so off I go, driving a car for the first time. I wonder if I can go and get a cheeky little flat white. You can. You, well, there's ways to do it. Do you, do you know if your regular ca- cafe near your house is doing the orders and is open as, as usual? All good. I know people. I know my baristas. I've got their cell phones. I'll just text them and say, hey, bro, I'm swinging by. <laughs> do a little deal. I, th- I don't think that's point. illegal. That's a, that's a click and collect thing. Yeah, I don't think you're breaking rules there. That's fine. You haven't outed yourself as a, a, a coffee addict. Uh, we all are, right? Um, so, I mean, well, on I that... Am. Yeah, I am. I mean, on that note, level three, um, do you reckon that's going to help smaller businesses survive? Oh, I don't know. But I, I think anything that enables people to earn some more income and anything that helps people have hope that there's a path to it being normal is a good thing but w- will that um will that cause everyone to survive no no i mean it's that new norm- normal i mean when i'm calling up owners at the minute and we're speaking it's them finding that new normal which is the it's difficult because people are sometimes stuck in ways sometimes it's a positive outcome that they're having to think outside the box um yeah and, and, and you know some people are natural at these times who will just pivot out of it and they'll find a path and then some uh, struggle like shit and they're freaking out and you know if you're in the headlights it's not a good place to be is there that's anything why the owner that's yep. why the owner needs to and owners need to stand up and lead their teams out of that you know yep. when you're in the headlights and and on that is it is there any advice you give on to thinking differently or uh you know i keep on saying pivot pivot in pivot in different ways looking at other parts of business i guess it's just not being too um rigid in that way what we know from the ice house is you've got to think about the business you and the business uh and you yourself personally so you have to be you have to be kind to yourself as a person that means exercise that means sleeping that means you know whatever you need to do to be in flow and then i think the second thing is you, you know, you have an ownership responsibility for the rest of your team to help people and help yourself think about what you can do differently if that's what you need to do. And so I yeah. think, I, you know, I, I watched um, Sven Hansen do a podcast yesterday and it's inspirational and always a reminder that we just need to look after ourselves and look after our teams and you, the sun will come up. Yeah. You can find a way. Yeah. 
there's going to be difficult uh, decisions to make along the way, but you're right. It's um, there is the sun will come up every day. Um, so I mean, these aren't. We're living in a very strange time, and I don't want these podcasts to continually for the next few weeks be around COVID. So, guiding away from that, let's let's look at you and your career. If people didn't know, as most people do, you've been at the Ice House for 18 years, and that tenure come to an end this year, which was, um, I guess, emotional, exciting. You know, can you can you think about 18 years ago when you started at the Ice House? Did you think it would be an 18 year journey? Oh, no, I don't think so. I was unemployed and I had my eyes on a on a bride uh, to be. And so I was like, you know, here's a job. This looks cool. This will be fun. And I think it was, t- it was just so addictive. I think it was addictive for a couple of reasons. One, because it was new and that's fun. Two, because um, it was hard. It was hard to get owners to spend money with us. Um, and then I think three, I fell in love with, um, business owners and founders, you know, just because of what you see they do in society, that just made it so addictive Yeah. to keep coming back. And, you know, then I was never going to leave. And then, you know, one day it happened and, um, and I'm grateful for everything that's happened over those 18 years, but also grateful for the future and realizing that it's in good hands with you guys. I mean, I, you notice like no hair. Um, I, I had a mop of hair like you 18 years ago. Oh, yeah. And if people believe that, they just need to look at pictures from 18 years ago. That's the truth, mate. <laughs> um, and so you, you think, uh, we were talking at the beginning of this podcast, I think that um, follically challenged friends like yourself um, really are shining through this time because I've got quite a mop going on at the minute, but you just keep on shaving it every day, do you? Is it just your go-to? Whip it yeah, off? Yeah, yeah. You just, you know, no, no money spent on hairdressers for the last couple of years for me. No. Money saved. There, Money if saved. It, there is a really good charity at the moment that um, uh, Owen Farrell, the English um, number 10, sorry for bringing up rugby, but um, he started to promote people who are saving on haircuts at the minute, give it to charity. Um, it's a really good look it up. Anyway, um, take us back 18 years, your interview with David Irving. Uh, people who know David, he's a, he's a great man. Um, was he ready for you <laughs> to interview? Was you yourself or was you, you know, 50% yourself? You know, people, when they go through an interview process, as I did at the Ice House, never really think about the people who are interviewing you to be in the interviewee. Um, so what was it like? Look, I, it's a really interesting thing, right? I didn't realise at the time, but I had narrative in me back then because the, the picture that I painted for the board, and let's be honest, it was... You know, it was probably me and five successful people who got to the shortlist. And, and those five successful people had all had a history and a career of success. And I was this 30-something kid who essentially said, why don't we go down, drive down a highway, and there's a number of tributaries coming off it, and there's a torch over the top that's helping shine the light of where an owner could go. And that's what I see the role of the Ice House. And... I think I just got it because I was passionate, I was young, I was enthusiastic, I was stupid and naive, and maybe I had a strong narrative. And I think that's, you know, David was very um, thoughtful. Um, Bridget Coates, Barry Spicer, Jeff Witcher, they were all, I think, quite challenging, and but they were thoughtful. And I think they were taken by the hope that I presented in that. And they probably thought, ah, he doesn't really know. He doesn't know how hard it's going to be, but with a bit of enthusiasm, it all happen. So, you know, and and I think David, you know, that was his what was his third career when you think about it, setting up the ice house with the others. But uh, I don't know. I tricked them somehow, and then they couldn't get rid of me for eighteen years. <laughs> well, you're quite um, you're quite reserved. You're quite a quiet soul, aren't you? You're a lot like me. We're very reserved kind of people, which yeah. is obviously. Uh, crap if people do know us um and so when you you're not scared about saying you know if there's an elephant in the room you'll t- you'll call it an elephant and you'll call yeah. everyone out um and people i'm thinking specifically the ice house board um is there been times where that's kind of got you into trouble uh, you've said oh, things and gone oh shit i told a couple of board members they're dickheads right <laughs> and you know one of my learnings there so i've done that a lot 
And I think, you know, one of my learnings is it's not so much, and I got pulled over the coals for doing that and it was wrong. You know, uh, it was more, that reaction from me was about my own insecurity of the way I thought of myself. Yeah. So it wasn't, how do I repress that? It was, why am I even thinking that? What am I even being that negative about? Let's just let that go. Assume everyone has the right intentions and values and just work together to achieve an outcome. And so, you know, I think in the first five to 10 years, I was wrapped by insecurity and needing to have a voice to prove to everyone that I was really smart and ice house was amazing. And look, the reality is once I started relaxing and people like David and others helped me understand that, you know, uh, I think I became a better leader and a better person as a result and more comfortable. Because yeah. as much as you say I'm an extrovert like you, do you know, I have no desire to go out when I get home. I just want to be at home with the kids and with Carla and just chill. And my most ideal time is at home with the fire going, bottle of red wine, watching a movie, you know, mm. and, you know, not meeting more people. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess that, well, that's been quite nice in lockdown then. It's given you some quality time with them, you know. I'm yeah, kind they, of... They you probably, know what they'd say? Yeah. They've not had quality time with me because I sit in my office off the garage working seven days a week. But, you know, there's been shit to be done and, and this is how I get how I get through. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. And I, and I'm shortly not paid. <laughs> oh, by the way, I didn't disclaim this. This is, this is free, right? This is, you're not, you can't be sending anything to the ice house for payment on this. Um, okay. uh, I get paid, uh, my normal way. You deserve to. You deserve Thanks. To. Cheers, mate. Um, I think that's something you said there that resonated with me. And to be honest, it is something that you said to me probably a year or so ago is that, um, people people's intentions even though my perception of people's intentions is is different to what it is i can't think of that i be, should believe that everyone's intention is, is correct and the reason they're doing things is because they believe in the company they work for um and i guess that's what we hope employees are believing in owners right now that every decision they're making is for the greater good of the, the business it, it, you know but there's some difficult decisions that are having to be made at the minute which is um well, there are, but look, if you take everyone on, on a genuine basis and you just reach out to them to provide support and just to be there for them, remarkable things can happen because most owners are isolated, are alone. And if, you, if they know that you've got their back, it's amazing what that can happen. And what I encourage everyone to do, including you and others, is you don't have to have the answer to pick up the phone to say, how are you going? And yeah. just to be there for people. And I think I'm actually way better at working with owners and founders than I am supporting my own mates when I really think about it. Because I will reach out to owners, how are you going? What are you up to? That's yeah. easier for me than talking to my mates who are just going to give me shit about having no hair and you know being rude and arrogant and all of that sort of stuff so maybe that's one of my work on other than growing my hair well, i'd like <laughs> no. to grow my lawn i'd like to grow my lawn garrett yeah you i saw i've seen your lawn it's a disappointing situation just you know it's pretty new as well you should be this spending weekend, a lot of time mate, i'm getting a cube of soil some fertilizer oh. some yeah. seed and oh, i'm yeah. patching i'm patching the lawn with the kids ten dollars an hour they're gonna earn you're earning that much. Where do they get the money to pay you? Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I know. I mean, on that note, me being funny, um, your biggest success at the Ice House was employing me, obviously. That's yep. needless to say. Um, but what would you say the second biggest achievement is at the Ice House? Uh, I just find that really difficult, uh, yeah. you know, to answer. I, I think probably the greatest success was starting with the owner manager program, you know, that was designed by someone else by David and others, but really David and seeing that go through what is now up to the 49th program uh, because of the impact that that have, there's lots of other things that we're proud of, but often I'm the most proud of when we try something and we screw it up, you know, pushing the boat out, trying things. I think there's something about when you're in a role that's supporting 
business and small business, being an agitator for them, yeah. not being a policy person or a advocate, you know, for the industry, just for the owner, agitating them, pushing them, trying things. You know, I love when we fail because I think if we keep failing, then we're pushing that boat out closer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the thing I love the most is when you bump into an owner or a founder and they tell you, this is what I've done. That inspires me every single day now to yeah. see more of that. Yeah. And it is, and we both, you know, you've worked there for 18 years and I've worked there for over three years, but that is something that is incredibly rewarding about the role is that when you're selling something or you're selling a dream and then you meet someone you know, two years or 10 years after they've done the program and they say, no, it's still one of the best things I've done in business. People, the phone calls that we're having at the minute every every day with owners who've done the program and there's some pretty um, shattered business owners who have lost a lot. Um, but the ones who tend to be the most positive are the ones who did it pre-GFC or have been through something or now have set the business up that it's secure through this, um, what is going to be a recession. And they're not... Um, not not scared, but they they feel more prepared than their peers, which is, I think, a huge advocate to well, the ice house. What, and what you see is by looking on Slack or looking on the WhatsApp groups of the owner managers. What I love as a voyeur is I can look at all the commentary that's going on in those, and then you see how the group is supporting each other. Yeah. And the older, wiser heads, the men and the women who've been through the '87 recession, that they are supporting the younger ones, and that. You know, that is cool. That's yeah. not me going or you going, I can help them. That's just seeing the system helping each other. That's mm. epic. Yeah, it is epic. So um, that's, that's whizzed by. We don't, we're trying to make these, um, you know, 20 minutes under half hour. So we'll, we'll bring it to an end. But something that I want to do on these podcasts is make it more uh, familiar and uh, ask some personal questions. So... Um, Lovely. I love personal questions. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and you can swear if you want. We can bleep it out. I mean, fuck it. Why not? We're in this kind of time that we're in. Um, also, the marketing team said that we're going to do this. going to add a, a humorous um, swear, you know, like a beep, maybe a duck or a dog barking or something like that. So that might be quite funny. So it would be inappropriate for me to call you a mofo. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um I mean, that's probably one of the nicest things you've ever said to me in my tenure at the Ice House. So let's go. Anyway, let's get to your personal questions. Uh, so, okay, let's think about three questions. You don't know what they are. So, um, and I don't know what they are. I'm just going to come up with them. But what's your favourite meal? Your last meal that you ever have? If you had to have a meal. Belly. Pork, pork belly. belly. On, on the bed of? Oh, yeah. Uh, pork belly on my barbecue that I've cooked. And then apple crumble made by my daughters. Oh, nice. What, with what's no your... pollution, with no pollution of kiwi fruit or just pure Apple. Granny Smith apples with a nice crust of uh, crumble on top. Yeah. Ice cream, and, you know, custard. There's uh, not many custard fans no custard. over here. No yeah. custard, mate. We're not English. I love a custard. And uh, the best thing about custards is leaving it for long enough so it gets that skin. Reminds me of my granddad. And then you get the skin off, people are going to be disgusted by that, but that's just my own. I haven't had custard since I lived here for eight years. Really? Yeah. Things, things we missed. Um, Favourite film? Uh, that's an interesting challenge. I'd say the most, the film I've enjoyed the most recently, The Tourist, which is yeah. quite an old one. Yeah. It's a good A couple of attractive looking people in that movie. That's not your reason though, is it? It helps. <laughs> um, and uh, I was going to say what car, but you're not a car person. People know what kind of car that you drive. And it's just, I mean, I'm not either. <laughs> so that was the same question. Um, and your favourite album? Uh, Paul Kelly. Nice. Australian legendary artist. Yeah. Actually, and Taylor Swift. Can I say that? You have. I like it. It's uplifting when I have to, you know, do emails listening to Taylor Swift. She's um, she's an uplifting person. And Great, anything that... uh, documentary of her actually to see what she's like. You know, is it really what she's like though? 
how would you know? What What are you really like when you're not on camera or not doing TV commercials for the ANZ or that real estate company? I actually thought we would have got through half hour that you mentioned in ANZ, which you're still dead bitter about. And it's fine. I'm sorry. It's fine. You're the, BN, the BNZ didn't pick me. Um, yeah. So, I mean, something I will will finish off now, but I feel very lucky to work for the Ice House. I feel lucky after I had my interview and you interviewed me that I got the role. But I, I think the, the thing that I've learned from you is, is your passion. And I don't have to be nice to you anymore because you, you're pretty much off the payroll now. So it doesn't matter what I say. But, you know, I, the way that you run the business as a CEO was around that passion. And, and it's something that I want to thank you for because it... it it helps everybody feel the passion for the ice house. So you've done a bloody good job. And um, hopefully this is a good start to the ice house podcast. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I, I think, um, you know, no one ever owns anything when it comes to organizations like the ice house. And I felt emotionally connected to it. But one of the things I'm really excited about leaving is that now the people that are the protectors of that brand and that organization can take it to the next level. I've always felt I got way more from the Ice House than I gave to it. And I feel, you know, I think that passion is right because I think in the end, owners and founders just need people to believe in them and be there for them. And actually, if you go on that journey with them, that is the most remarkable opportunity that you get to be inside their world and helping them. And that's, yep. you know, what I think is so remarkable about the Ice House yep. and the opportunity. And, you know, we give a toss. Like, yeah, we we're engagers at the Ice House. We care. And that's pretty special. And that's not going to change. No, and I think that's not just... I think that's something you've probably imparted and then you put down to the rest. But the people that we work with, who coaches and facilitators, that they all have the same the same yeah. cloth there. They truly believe in, in New Zealand and love working with them. So... And only, you know, and only if you just keep making sales, remember, because if the way the world works, if you don't sell something, it doesn't happen, man. The world is revolves around sales, which is one of the things people didn't like about me was the harassment on selling something. No, it's true. But I personally looked at it two ways. One, if you asked me what I'd sold and I made a sale, it made me feel good. And if I hadn't, I could tell you to fuck off. And that was great. <laughs> that was win-win for me. Uh, no, I think, you know, you did, you bring passion, you brought a lot and um, you, you won't be missed because you're going to be there all the time anyway. But um, you, you've, it, it's been great having a half hour with you and it could only be half hour because I've got to go and sell now, as you know. Um, but appreciate your time. Take it easy. You too, mate, and um, we'll speak soon. Anything, any questions for Andy, um, hit us up at grow at the icehouse.co.nz. Um, anything for uh, anyone at the Ice House, get in touch with us. Uh, and this is the first of many. We'll speak to you soon. Thanks, mate.